What's up guys, how's it going? Um, we're going to go into the vault again today with some CDs. Um, later today I plan to do the Metal Tag 2021 that the Rock Scout uh, has put out there. If you guys don't know him, you should check him out. I'll link him below once I create that video. And then I have, as I mentioned yesterday, all my year-end list stuff down here. I'm not going to really rank anything, as I mentioned before, other than the top album, which you all already know. Um, in the background, we're listening to um, The Everlorn by Sanaira, I think is how you pronounce it. I believe they're out of Texas. Um, I have nothing to show you. I have ordered it, but I don't know if I ordered the, the cassette, CD, or vinyl. Um, but I think that should be on the way this month sometime. i um, been listening to it on Bandcamp, and it's uh, so far it's really great. So more to come on that. Um, so digging into the vault here, um, we're going to talk about The Red Sect. This is um, album by the band All Hell on Horror, Pain, Gore, Death. Um, this came out in 2015. Um, I saw these guys, didn't really know much about them. I saw them at Dark Lord Day in 2018, I believe it was. Um, Three-piece band out of somewhere in North Carolina. This was mixed and mastered by Joel Grind from um, Toxic, Hol Toxic Holocaust. Um, this is their second full length. I uh, Live, they were great at Three Floyd's Brewery, Dark Lord Day, if you don't know, they have a big shindig every year where they release uh, a beer called Dark Lord with the variants, and then they also have a bunch of bands play. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty good time, and All Hell was there. Um, they sounded great live, so I bought um, this album and their next one, The Grave Alchemist. Uh, this came out on, I think it was Prosthetic, yeah. Um, I like this one a little better. They've, uh, they had obviously matured. This came out, I think, a year or two later, 2017. Um, they don't capture their live sound on CD, which I guess most bands really don't. Not much to show on the inside here. but um, So I was kind of hoping for that live feel, and I didn't get it on the album. But it's, uh, it's kind of a blackened death rock and roll, I guess, for lack of a, a better term. I say that a lot on this channel. Um, but yeah, it's it's quality stuff. I think their their last album, they put one out in 2019. I have not heard that yet. That was also on Prosthetic, but if that kind of three-piece um, revenge kind of-y, but more occult rock type stuff, if that's it, up your alley, check out All Hell. And next up is a band from Cork, uh, Cork, Ireland, Altar of Plagues. Um, this is teethed glory and injury this came out in 2013 a profound lore um, this had a lot of hype in 2013 uh, the cover kind of intrigued me the I get are these yoga poses I don't really know um, got a lot of hype I bought it really didn't like it at first um, re uh, reacquainted myself with it as I started going through my CD collection and it, it's uh, Better than I remember. Um, a lot of experimentation on this one. Very um, Death Spell, Omega experimentation type stuff. But um, some keyboards, some soundscapes, um, some just weird sounds all together. But also some straight black metal. Um, I believe this is their last full length. I don't think they're around anymore. Um, one of the guys went on to form a band called, I think, Wife or something like that. And one of the guys went to drum for the band Conan um, who I used to be a fan of haven't really listened to them in a long time but yeah it's great experimental black metal uh, I can't believe it's been seven years it feels like I just got that album not that long ago but um, if you like experimental black metal check them out uh, we're going to switch gears here American Aquarium Things Change out on New West uh, this came out in 2019 2018, towards the end of 2018. Um, these guys are led by, I think it's B.J. Burnham is his name. They're out of North Carolina. Kind of alt-country type stuff, which I really hate. Um, you can see there, the world is on fire. Uh, this came out around the time I think Trump had gotten elected. 
Um, so some of this is a little politically tinged, but not really in your face, like, you know, Trump sucks. You know, that's, you know, kind of stupid argument, in my opinion, just to say somebody sucks. Um, but yeah, just kind of the perspective of the way politics were in 2016, 2017. Um, the song also, When We Were Younger Men, kind of talks about starting a band, getting in the van, going out and doing your thing, um, and relating the stages of, of that in life to um, a few Tom Petty songs, which was kind of cool. Um, great songwriter, great uh, alt country, very Wilco-ish. I think they actually got their name, American Aquarium, from uh, Wilco song if I remember correctly so um, if that's up your alley it's not metal but um, they put out a new album called Lam Lamations Lamentations something like that this year got a lot of hype haven't listened to it yet but um, next up background music by American Nightmare this is a uh, hardcore out of Boston Massachusetts this came out 2001 I believe on Bridge 9, still have the Bridge 9 order form to buy, um, what do they got here? Oh, you can get, uh, they actually have a website where you can order CDs, t-shirts, etc. And then on the other side has some American Nightmare merch on there. Um, these guys are, I hate to call these guys hardcore. Um, I don't really know what the proper name for them is. They're kind of uh, dark hardcore if that's even a thing um, when I think hardcore I think agnostic front sick of it all um, stuff like that these guys are a lot more brutal uh, than that the vocals are a lot um, kind of like death metal vocals um, but um, we are AMPM classic hardcore song in my opinion shoplifting in the ghost town uh, these guys uh, didn't do much after this i think they made one or two albums and then they i think they got sued or something like that um over the name american nightmare there was either another band out there at first i thought it was uh glenn danzig maybe suing them for um I think they're a misfit song called american nightmare i don't know but they got sued i believe and had to change your name um they changed to give up the ghost i think they put out one album under that moniker it was okay but um they never did match the magnificent of magnificence of background music so if you're not familiar with american nightmare um just go get this and that's all you really need next up we have a mestagon with there 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 um four song i think this is considered an album just because the songs are so long uh this came out on um world terror committee wtc um just kind of your standard fair black metal uh, i don't really remember what grabbed me some lyrics there and this i think it was the the first song i heard um what's it called i think it was called hotch Palong was the song i heard and I liked it quite a bit, and I, it was just an immediate buy uh, for me. This came out about five years ago. Um, they have a lot of albums before this that I've honestly never checked out. This is the only one I ever purchased. Um, they have produced or released a couple since this. Have not heard it. Um, so it may go digging back. This is just your standard, fair, solid black metal. Not Nothing um, too inventive, different. Um, compared to other black metal um, but yeah it's it's solid stuff highly recommend you check out um, a mastagon that's how I pronounce it a mastigon a mastagon yeah, that's probably right um, next up is a band um, that gets a lot of mixed reviews this is the latest from Amon Amarth Berserker um, I only own a couple of Amon Amarth CDs I think I bought this it was on sale somewhere maybe at FYE or something I was in the mall I don't know why I was in the mall. I think my wife maybe took me there, but um, saw this and I was like, "Yeah, I'll give him Bonnet Marth another try." I think I have Deceiver of the Gods, um, but it, you know, there were like two or three songs on it, and then I, I think I have it for sale right now. But um, this is like the Digipack. Uh, they get a lot of flack in the metal community for the goofy um, Viking imagery and the whole swinging swords on stage and whatnot. Um, I. I guess I kind of see that to an extent if you're one of these people that think your metal has to be 
uh, super serious all the time. Uh, you've probably seen the videos of people that like sit down in the pit and they all pretend like they're rowing a boat. Um, that really turns a lot of people off. Um, but the songs are catchy. You know, if I want to, you know, if I need to get pumped up for something and I feel like I need to, you know, like you're quote unquote going to war, um, I can't think of anything better to put on. Uh, this album's got, I want to say, um, Fafner's Gold. They just put a video out for that about a month ago. Great song. Crack the Sky is great. Hammer Floor is great. Shield Wall is great. Raven's Flight is pretty great. And then they kind of peter out a little bit. But uh, there's 12 songs on here, and I'd say about half of them are solid, very catchy. So uh, many of you know Amon Amarth, but if not, um, I'd probably start with the earlier stuff and work your way up to this one. But this is still a, a solid, I think this came out 20, yeah, 2019, still a solid release. Next up, going way back to 94, um, this is Tales from a Thousand Lakes by Amorphous. You death metal heads know this band. Um, this was the first release that I bought from Amorphous um, on Relapse. I like the inside here. It kind of shows the beautiful artwork uh, on there. I think this is an original CD. Um, this was the first death metal I heard with keyboards in it, and at first it really turned me off. I was not a not a huge fan of it, but as I uh, inside there got a little older, started to appreciate things a little bit more. Music opened my mind a little bit. I grew to appreciate amorphous and their use of keyboards. Um, I think Elegy maybe came out after this, and they. They started to go in this direction that I was like, Ugh, I don't know what's happening here. And then um, they really went a whole different direction, kind of proggy, um, folky, melodic metal. And that's not a bad thing. It's just it's it's not Tales from the Thousand Lakes Amorphous. I always go back to this, and I pretty much to me, if you own this one. Uh, and is it the Carlian Isthmus? Is That's not a good thing to... Isthmus is not a good thing for someone with a, a lisp, a slight lisp to say, but um, yeah, you don't need anything else other than, than this and that, those first uh, first couple albums. And I, they use a Moog in here, a keyboard's in a Moog, Mog Moog, so that's pretty cool. Um, next four releases here are all from the same band, kind of a controversial band. A lot of people hate these guys. Anal Cunt. Uh, this is Morbid Floris, the original CD pressing I bought um, when I saw them play Milwaukee Metal Fest many years ago. Um, as I've mentioned on my channel previously, I saw them play live. The lead singer was wasted, Seth Putnam. Apparently he had been leaning against the keg. Leading up to their gig, drinking the free beer, came in on stage. They had no bass player. Um, he took some folding chairs and threw them at the crowd and then jumped in the crowd and started fighting with them when the first song started and I never witnessed anything uh, like that before. Um, so they really opened my eyes to um, what music, extreme extremity in music uh, could really mean. It wasn't just the sound, um, it's the stage presences too. Notice here on the back they have a guitar drummer and singer, no bass player. Um, when they came out on stage I was like, what? what's happening here there's no bass player um but yeah good this is probably my favorite release by them um the next few that came out i won't talk too much about everyone should be killed um this came out in 94 maybe 93 has 58 songs on it you kind of get the idea it's not i don't even know what you call it you know kind of it's not grind um but when they signed to Earache, this is their first on Earache, they had to change, I don't know if they were forced to change their name, but that's AEC. It stands for Anal Cunt, but if you look, even on the spine, it doesn't say Anal Cunt. So Earache was uh, probably putting the clamps down on it and say, hey, you can have your little goofy logo that people can't really tell what it is, and we're going to put the parental advisor sticker on it, but you can't have the words Anal Cunt on your... Uh, CD. It's it's grindcore, but it's it's all over the place. Some of it's just noise. Um, very odd. Um, next up, another one on Eric. 
top 40 hits. Kind of a joke, obviously, because they did not have any hits whatsoever. And they did a version of Staying Alive, which is kind of funny. Um, on this other one, uh, what is it on this one? They did a version of the song, that shitty 90s song, You're Unbelievable, or Unbelievable. I can't remember which album it's on. It might be this one. Um, but yeah, another one on Earache. Again, the AC logo, but it does not say anal cunt anywhere. Um, these guys, I believe, were out of Massachusetts area. Um, not much to show you on the inside, just some pictures of the band. Again, they had um, two guitar players on this one, but no bass player. I think the one guitar player, his um, sound was just low. To put some low end in the mix, but their, their stuff's hard to listen to at times when there's no bottom end. And the last one I purchased, or the one I still have in my collection, I should say, um, the infamous logo, 40 More Reasons to Hate Us, out in 96, also on Earache. Um, around this time, I believe Pantera took them out on tour. Um, you can get a little Earache order form to buy your t-shirts and sweatpants. Um, Phil Anselmo was really big in the underground, still is. Um, he was a big proponent of bands like Anal Cunt, I Hate God, and other stuff. He did some backing vocals on a few of these songs. I don't remember which ones exactly. Um, sometimes Anal Cunt, though, the, the song titles alone were, were just um, fun to read. Like, you're a fucking cunt. Phyllis is an old fucking cunt. Al Stankus is always on the phone with his bookie. Um, you fucking freak. The theme from Three's Company. They did that. Um, everyone in Anal Cut is dumb. Um, they were really good about making fun of themselves, too. So, um, your family is dumb. You're dumb. Um, stuff like that. You get the idea. Song titles were dumb. Many people found them offensive. If they came out in 2020, they would be canceled in a heartbeat. They would not be able to have social media. Um etc 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 so that's the world we've become um but yeah so that's it for this edition of the vault um probably not gonna do one of these for a bit i got a lot of stuff coming um through the mail uh, i think I, I just got another email today i got a couple more albums coming so uh, it's gonna be good to get into the swing of things here and get some new stuff uh, i've been as you notice been doing a lot of vault videos lately uh just because I don't have anything new to, to talk about. So why not dig deep into the collection and see if there's anything I really want to keep. Um, and anything that I just want to get rid of. So um, that's it for today's uh, edition of Mostly Metal. I might do my year-end list here later. We'll see um, how things go later on today. But thanks for checking out the channel, guys. And I will catch you all later.